and we're back with your E3 2012 live show. Great show so far. We've already seen some fantastic games that I am not allowed to steal. But before we continue on with Black Ops 2, I need to remind you that IGN's coverage doesn't stop with the live show. Check out e3.ign.com for our full coverage of the show and subscribe to both of our YouTube channels, IGN and Start. But right now, it's time to answer the call of duty. Say hello to Black Ops 2. Thanks, Damon. We're here to take a look at Call of Duty Black Ops 2. Uh, really excited to have Dave Anthony, he's a game director, and you wrote the, the, the game as well. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, welcome. Um, so, so we saw Call of Duty earlier during the conferences. We saw the single player campaign. You're going to be showing us uh, a mission from, uh, it's a Strike Force mission. So tell us about how Strike Force missions work. What, what, what are these things? So I can tell you that the team at Treyarch, who I'm incredibly proud of for pushing this so hard, is so excited about this game mode called Strike Force. It's, it's not like anything the Call of Duty campaign has ever seen before. It's completely different. It's like, this game is no longer just a linear set of missions that you go through with a linear story. These Strike Force missions actually give you a completely different kind of gameplay experience within the campaign itself. And it's actually a sandbox experience. So, as opposed to linear scripted levels, of which we have still a lot of in the game, you actually have these Strike Force levels where you actually dictate the action yourself. You're given a set of tools to play with, and these aren't the tools you kind of used to in Call of Duty. Call of Duty's in 2025 for Black Ops 2, so this is a whole new set of tools, kind of gameplay experiences that you've never seen before in Call of Duty. And not only that, but they are all at your disposal. So now you have a mission, and you've got to try and figure out with all the things that you have at your disposal, how am I going to do this mission? Gotcha. So now uh, we're taking a look at uh, Strike Force Mission. This is set in Singapore, I believe, correct? Yeah, that's correct. And um, you can see the, the, we call this Overwatch mode. And in Overwatch mode, this is one of the very different kind of gameplay experiences in this for Call of Duty, where you can actually control any of the soldiers on the battlefield. So you can choose in Overwatch mode, you can see there, she just zoomed into that soldier there. She could have zoomed into any of those soldiers on the battlefield. She can actually, from the Overwatch mode, tell us a group of soldiers to go to one point or attack one point, not just one individual soldier. But the key thing here, and you can see as she's doing right now, we want this experience to also be something that's not too overwhelmingly different for people who are used to playing Call of Duty. So now she's playing Call of Duty in first person. You know, you can look at this and think, you know, this is kind of a regular kind of looking Call of Duty level, right? She's going through in first person. At any point here, she could choose to go into Overwatch mode again and command different members of her squad. There she goes. So now she's looking around the battlefield, scoping it out. Now the interesting thing here is, you can see on the left there, there are soldiers. But the soldiers aren't the only type of thing that you can control in this game mode. This is a true sandbox. And in this mode, you have access to other different types of equipment, which come online at different points of the mission. So as soon as these different types of equipment come online, you can use new strategies to do that. So you see the little marker there, that's where she's actually deployed one of her separate platoons to go. So you can send different people to different parts of the map to actually use strategy to win this map. Now, how many people is this designed to be played by? So right now, this is, this is playable in the single player campaign. But you are, you are have control of the entire battlefield as the player. Gotcha. So it's not cooperative, it's just single player? That's right. Okay. That's right. Now you can see here, look, she was in first person there. You see that's what we call the ASD, the Automated Sentry Drone. Right. And that is a completely new different kind of gameplay experience. You're right. controlling a vehicle there. And you can go anywhere in this map in that vehicle. And here we go, she's in Overwatch mode again. You can see there she's deployed, deploying waypoints. So that's her deploying something. Yeah. Uh, does she have to actually uh, get to a certain point or so many kills or so much XP before she can drop something? Or No, you get the opportunity to actually drop these points right from the start. What actually happens as the mission evolves and how the gameplay evolves is what equipment you have. So depending on how you are doing in the mission, you will get access there. You see that thing there, the claw? Yep. You can actually take control of that thing. And you get control of this thing you see this huge minigun, which you can get in, you get inside this thing, and you can just start tearing up everything in this thing. And this is where the strategy element comes in, because you've got to think to yourself, okay, if I have access to something like the claw, where is the best part of the map that I can deploy that claw and use it? 
And this is the kind of strategy that hasn't really been possible in Call of Duty levels before. Because you have this Overwatch mode where you have the view. Look, she's in the uh, the ASD again there. Gotcha, right. And this is actually, as you can see, this actually moves faster than the soldier. So she's really? now... Even, even sprinting? Yeah, so this is... Um, you see, see how powerful this thing is? Yeah. <laughs> I see how powerful it is. Yeah. <laughs> you don't really want to get in the way of that. Do you? No, no, you don't. So now, the, the gameplay itself, Strike Force missions, are they designed to be wave based or do you complete a level and then move to another one or how does it work? Each one's different. But let me tell you one of the things that I'm really fascinated about with these things is that it's part of what we're doing with the branching storyline for the game. So in, in Call of Duty in the past, there's never really been a notion of failure for a level. The only real notion of failure is not being able to get through a level towards the end. With the Strike Force levels, you're on a mission, and whether you succeed or fail in this mission will actually dictate the outcome of things within the story. So now, how persistent is that? Like, I mean, so say, say I play a certain way in this particular mission and I don't like the outcome or maybe how it's gonna affect my single player campaign. Can I go back and do it again and get a different that, outcome That's still? a great question, and the way, the way we handle that is, we actually give you numbers of units so let's say, for the sake of argument, you have five platoons that you could use for this mission, right? That means you've got five chances to play this mission. And you might, to use, you might choose to use those five platoons on this strike force level or on another level. So if you're having trouble with another level, you spend all your platoons on that one, you fail at that, you're not going to be able to go back to this. So it's almost like you have control not only of the battlefield, but of the whole of the forces that are part of this game. Gotcha. And then the really cool thing is, this whole thing is set within the context of the Cold War, and Cold War will be the outcome will be dictated partially by how successful or not you are with these levels. Now, what just happened there? That didn't look good. Was that us losing, or did we just like oh, no. kill everybody? That was a win. So oh, what? that was a win, okay, whoo! <laughs> <laughs> no, Shannon did great, and she, took, she actually took control of the enemy's missile and reverse engineered it to actually attack its own fleet. Gotcha. So she blew, she blew up the freighter there. That's a mission success. That's good for the war. So Strike Force, Strike Force missions, more tactical. You can switch between all these different types of units. Very different than just playing as a foot soldier. Absolutely. And the, the great thing about it is it has depth. Because we wanted it to be accessible to people who don't want to bother about strategy, which is where you saw she was just kind of playing in first person for a while. You can do that and you can play it like that. But for people who really want to access the depth of this thing and are really into it and really want to succeed at every mission, you're going to have to really figure out some of these levels in terms of the strategy of how you play them. You're going to need to go into Overwatch mode and make sure you deploy people to the right places and do that sort of thing to really have the best chance of success. Now, how many Strike Force missions will there be? So we're still, we're still working on, on the game and the, and the final number. I don't want to reveal that at this stage, but it's going to be a significant portion of the campaign. Gotcha. And the thing, the thing I really like about the way it's balanced is that it really breaks up the campaign, so we, we deliver the really intense, epic, cinematic experiences that we like to do with the campaign, and then we pepper these strike force levels within the structure of the whole campaign. So it's always like you're feeling something fresh in terms cool. of a gameplay experience. Well, Dave, thank you so much for coming by the booth and showing us the game. Uh, guys, that was Call of Duty Black Ops 2, checking out Strike Force missions. Uh, when does the game come out? The game comes out, I think, November 13th. November 13th, and on what platforms? It's coming out on uh, Xbox 360, uh, PlayStation, um, all the regular, all the regular ones. All, that people all use. the usual suspects. Awesome. Uh, well, for all of the rest of your Call of Duty uh, news and information, keep it tuned to IGN. I'm gonna uh, send it back to Damon. Thanks, guys. Good to know that there are just as many explosions in the future. So, my awesome audience, which Call of Duty is your favorite? Follow at IGN on Twitter and let us know with the hashtag E3. Coming next. We're going to shamble through some zombie-infested lands on the brink of destruction. No, I'm not talking about LA. I'm talking about Resident Evil 6. See you soon.